You are listening to Book Clips, a mini podcast in which authors or narrators do readings from novels. Check out the show notes for the synopsis and buy links for this book. Darkness United, the Darkness Trilogy Book 3, written by K.C. Luck, narrated by Violet Dixon. Chapter 1 the farmhouse was warm from the fire in the new cook stove, which they installed only a few weeks before. Candles burned for light and gave the space a cheery feel. Everyone bustled about getting ready for the Thanksgiving feast. Wild turkey, potatoes, the last of the seasonal vegetables, and freshly baked rolls from the Dutch oven rounded out what was sure to be a perfect meal. Anna Scott was setting down dinner plates on the crowded dining room table when she heard a knock and then the front door opening. Any turkey left? came her friend Taylor's voice. Nope. Anna's wife, Lexi Scott, called back, placing silverware beside each plate as Anna put them down. Not even a wishbone. Lexi's sister Jackie whisked into the room holding an unopened bottle of red wine. Well, I guess Taylor and I will just have to go drink this in the barn loft alone then, she said. And Anna's eyes widened with surprise. Bottles of wine in Astoria were scarce. Setting down the last dish, she moved to give Jackie a hug in greeting. Where in the world did you find that? she asked, embracing her sister-in-law. She heard Taylor chuckle. Believe it or not... She's had it for over a month, Taylor answered. Been keeping it for our Thanksgiving celebration. Anna was even more shocked. Jackie was an amazing woman and a true friend, but her love of wine was well known. I don't know what to say, Anna said. Jackie, that is incredibly special. The woman smiled as she tilted her head at Taylor. Taylor bet me I couldn't do it, she said. So, of course, I had to do it. As everyone laughed, Sam Quinn wandered into the dining room with her hands full of glasses. Had to what? she asked with a grin. Anna reached to help the woman with the fragile cargo as Taylor plucked the wine bottle from Jackie's hand and pulled her into an embrace. Not let me get the upper hand, that's what, Taylor said with a husky chuckle. There was no mistaking the chemistry between them. Now, I'm going to go open this bottle so it has a few minutes to breathe. I intend to have you fully enjoy it, dear. Jackie playfully pushed Taylor away, and Anna loved watching the interaction. Things had not always been so carefree between the two, and it made her heart warm to see them finally happy. As Taylor left, and Sam placed the last of the glasses, Anna stood back and inspected the table. People would sit elbow to elbow, but she knew no one minded. The house was filled with friends and family who survived hard times by pulling together. She felt Lexi slip her arm around her waist and pull her in close. Anna lifted her head to look into the blue-gray eyes of her wife and smiled. Hey, Lexi said. Hey, back, Anna answered, as she had a hundred times before. Happy? Lexi asked, and Anna sighed. She was indeed. The people she loved most in the world were about to sit and share a bounty they created by working together. I am, she answered, more than I could have imagined. As the room full of men and women reveled in the festive air around her, Meg O'Grady knew the pretty brunette in the corner of the old pub was checking her out. Over the last hour, whenever she let her eyes wander in that direction, the woman gave her a little smile just before glancing away. In the dim light thrown by oil lamps spread around the room, Meg could not decide if the shyness was legitimate or just a clever way of keeping her attention. Either way, she was definitely interested, even if only for a night. Before she made a move, her first mate, Jimmy, 
sauntered over with a pair of mugs of dark beer. He held one out for Meg. Try this, he said, and Meg rolled her eyes. I'll stick with a hard cider, thanks, she said. Ever since the power went out, whenever I try someone's attempt at beer, it sucks. Nope, try it. Cost me extra, he said with a warm chuckle, so enjoy it. Taking the drink with a shake of her head, Meg tapped it against the rim of his mug and then swallowed deep. She was pleasantly surprised by the flavor. Whoa, she said, looking down at the foamy contents. This is actually really good. As she said it, she suddenly felt someone at her side. Glancing over, Meg saw the brunettes sidled up beside her. I certainly hope so, the woman said with a hint of a blush. My brother and I made it. Meg raised an eyebrow. My compliments, then, she replied. I've had a few other attempts as of late, and they were horrible. Nothing compared to this. The brunette nodded, clearly gaining confidence as she talked about her craft. Well, since today is Thanksgiving, we worked hard on a special batch, she explained. No small feat in a world without electricity. But I think the pumpkin spice is the difference maker. Thanksgiving? Today? Meg asked with raised eyebrows. The brunette laughed and put a hand lightly on Meg's arm. The touch was warm, and a small tingle went through her. She once again wondered where things might be headed between them. Although she seduced a few women in the different seaports coming south, she never assumed. Yes, in the United States, today is Thanksgiving, she said. But let me guess, you are coming down from Canada somewhere? Before Meg could answer, Jimmy jumped in on the conversation. We are, my lady, he said with a grin. Graham Island, British Columbia, in fact, wandering our way to warmer weather. Meg took a sip of her beer while wondering if a firm kick in Jimmy's shin would be subtle enough to get him to evacuate the immediate area. Apparently, her glare over the rim of her mug was sufficient. Oh, hey, I think I'll get in line for some turkey, he continued, dropping Meg a wink. I think that's a great idea, Meg said with a smirk. Save me something. Jimmy gave the brunette a small salute with his mug as he moved off. Ma'am, he said, a pleasure. The woman smiled. The pleasure is mine, she said as Jimmy walked away. After a pause, she turned her look back to Meg. Their eyes met and a spark of attraction jumped between them. The tingle Meg felt earlier turned to a low heat. And you? The brunette asked. Is it a pleasure to meet you? Meg cocked an eyebrow and considered the woman for a moment. Undoubtedly, not a lot of lesbians wandered through her town these days, and she was merely taking advantage of an opportunity. So who am I to judge, she thought, as a smile grew on her face. Even though Meg knew she would be back on her boat first thing in the morning, and probably never return here again, she was more than willing to embrace the moment. I like to think so, she murmured and the brunette ran her hand down Meg's arm to take her hand. I know where there are an extra few bottles of this beer you like, if you're interested, she offered. Shall I show you? Meg tossed down the last of her beer and stepped away from the wall. I'd like nothing more, she answered, and let the woman lead her out the door. As she walked across the nearly empty mess tent at Camp Aberdeen, Major Grace Hamilton knew the reason the food on her tray was especially unappetizing looking was because she was so late through the chow line. Still, the gray hue of the turkey and the gelatinous brown gravy over lumpy mashed potatoes was attractive. It certainly was not the Thanksgiving dinner she used to make with her friends and the random young soldier who had no other place to go. I wonder if that is still happening anywhere, she thought, 
as she took a seat on a vacant table's bench. Somehow, it seemed unlikely. Picking up her fork, the light bulb hanging from a cable above her flickered dim and then brightened for a moment. Grace looked up, and the flow of electricity settled as the light returned to a steady glow. The Corps of Army Engineers, only just a week ago, patched together a network of cabling to draw power from the refurbished Bonneville Satellite Power Station nearby. The number of kilowatts generated was still nominal, in the big scheme of things, but light was light, in Grace's opinion. She knew it was only a matter of time, until the smart men and women of the Corps figured out how to coax more output. Then maybe some things can go back to being a little more normal, she thought, while digging into her mound of potatoes on her plate. She took a bite, chewed, and forced herself to swallow. The taste was beyond horrible. But wasting food was not an option. There was barely enough to go around. As she spooned up another bite, she saw a corporal from one of her MP watch details come into the cavernous tent and glance around. Seeing her, he walked to her table, came to attention, and saluted. Grace returned it before motioning to the other bench. At ease, Corporal Mack, she said. Unless it's urgent, sit down and make your report. The young man relaxed and slipped onto the bench opposite her. She saw him glance at her tray of food. Have you eaten? Grace asked. No, ma'am, he answered. Not yet. I'm on duty for another two hours. Grace did not have the heart to tell him he was not missing much. She just hoped there would be enough left to feed him and the rest of those still out watching the perimeter in the cold rain. Picking up the roll from her plate, she held it out to the young man. Eat this, she said, and he grinned as he took it. She watched him scarf it down in two bites. Then he seemed to catch himself and sat up straighter. It was unusual for an enlisted corporal to sit down with a major, let alone eat her food. Sorry, ma'am, he said, and Grace gave him a small smile. There had been a time when following military rules to the letter mattered to her. But lately, her thinking started to change. Recently, the government was doing a lot of things she did not condone. Just make your report, she said. Corporal Mack wiped his mouth with the back of his hand before answering. Yes, ma'am, he answered. Another party has been detained. They are being escorted to intake. Grace nodded. She assumed he was there to tell her as much, but hoped her guess was wrong. Land or sea, she asked. Camp Aberdeen sat on the shore of a harbor, so boats occasionally wandered in, although most new arrivals came up the highway to the east. Land, ma'am, Corporal Mack answered. About a half dozen people, I think. Pushing her tray away, Grace stood. As an officer in the U.S. Army Military Police Corps, she was assigned the task of interviewing all refugee parties upon arrival to Camp Aberdeen. It was a job she hated. Watching the hopeful faces of men, women, and children change to dismay, as she explained the new laws to them, was slowly crushing her spirit. Darkness United, The Darkness Trilogy Book Three Written by K.C. Luck Narrated by Violet Dixon You have been listening to Book Clips. Check out the show notes for the synopsis and buy links for this book. If you are interested in showcasing your novel, then check out the show notes for more information.